Afternoon. Uh, going back 48 hours, uh, obviously disappointed to, to not finish that game off. That game was, uh, in our opinion, up for grabs. And, uh, you know, I think there's a ton of stuff we got through the film and, and, and looked at it. We talked about it after the game. There was a lot of disappointment in the locker room. Um, and that was, it was good to see. I'm not afraid for our guys to express their disappointment at this point and wanted to win those games. Um, again, it was up for grabs. I thought they played with uh, awesome effort. Um, it was good seeing a new group, a new team that see if they that see the resiliency they've got. Um, you know, that to see if they can, um, a new year, you know, what they do in a little adverse situation, what they do with a slow start, what they do against the wall on the road versus Pac-12 team, and uh, to see those guys rally and, 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 and to do what they, some, a lot of those guys did in that game was good to see. And the progress is real. Brutal way to finish. And uh, in, the, in that game, we let that one slip away, disappointed. Those are the games we now want to not be just competitive in. We want to finish. And I think that's the mindset in this building now. And you can see that. I think that's, there's a resounding, um, I think, feel in our building and our coaches and our players now. Um, that, that I'm so excited about. Um, it's real, it's genuine, it's authentic, it's together. Um, I, it hasn't been like that uh, since I've been here. And, and so far, that's what you want. We got a, we got a long road ahead, we got 10 weeks left, and uh, I'm excited as I'll get out to be around these guys right now. Coach, you mentioned the slow start there um, in the first half. With time to reflect, is there anything that you can point out to and say, hey, this is why we started off so slow? No, I mean, it's, it, it was is in a, it kind of all over the little bit, uh, spread around a little bit. There's some drop passes early on, some communication things. It's just a slow start. You know, I think maybe the bye week, going into fast and getting into week one, and then getting a bye week right off the bat, you know, I, there's no excuses for that. We practice well all week. We, we practice in the morning. We go hard. I'm up tempo. You guys who are out here, you see it. There's no, it's not a lazy practice. Uh, we're up in the morning. We're ready to roll. Good meetings that night. I think it's just that, you know, first opportunity going to that, going to that place and see if guys can get started and um, maybe someone's waiting for someone else to make a play, you know. And uh, we hadn't done that. We, we played catch really well. We communicated really well. And, uh, again, more than anything, though, th to see them respond, that's important. That's as important as anything else. Uh, they rallied together. They didn't hang their heads. Um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm excited about. There's a lot, a lot of really good stuff on, in all three phases of the ball. Um, we didn't get pushed around. That was the other thing, too. I mean, watching the film, I like watching the sideline cut up after a game at night when we get back and just watch the sideline and watch the line of scrimmage and to see, to see our line not get pushed around, but to dominate the line of scrimmage in a lot of ways, uh, running the football effectively, put dents in the defense to get, you know, four more sacks and, and, and to do what they did and stop the run and, and, and do a lot of stuff they did in the second half with their adjustments. I mean, right now the, there's a lot of things going well that I'm excited about, especially going in this week and going to North Texas at home and noon kick. It's fired up, man. Go the second half, you made some adjustments. Really, on the defense side of the ball, you guys kind of hunkered down. Can you talk about some of the adjustments that you made? Yeah, I did a nice job. Obviously, we, 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 uh, we know that they were, uh, you know, they want to run the football with, with Ott, um, but they're also really dangerous outside, you know, and we've got some guys on the perimeter. They're in the, in the positions for uh, the first few weeks, having some injuries that we've got. And so they tested us there. We did a nice job adjustments second half, what we, who we needed to get in, what we need to adjust uh, scheme-wise. And I think to see guys react in week two that way into this defense that fast, that says a lot. That's a, that, that makes me excited for the rest of the season to see guys adjust against that competition with a new group. I mean, you've got a half a dozen guys who are still new out there in the two deep um, and with a new defensive coordinator, you know. And then on offense, we got a handful of guys on, on offense hearing me for the first time in some adjustments. So to see guys respond that fast is, in, in week two is exciting. And, and to be in that game and, and, and again, to, to have, be, be there to finish is, is now, now the point. Coach, can you talk about uh, the contributions of Jare Williams? Seven tackles, one TFL the interception. Uh, talk about his impact on the field. Yeah, I mean, obviously the production, it, it puts you in position to, to be excited. Um, obviously, it's all over the field. Uh, he plays multiple spots. You've seen him in the secondary corner. You've seen him at nickel. You've seen him drop back in the, in the third level as well. Um, we've recognized that in Dre for a long time, and now we've got him out there, and, and he's got a game under his belt, and now he goes into game two, and, and you can see him respond. Um, he came out the sideline a couple times saying he's going to make a play, and he did. Uh, we got a few guys like that now that, that we hadn't had, that, that, that know that when that ball get, when they get a chance to make a play, it's going to happen, and uh, it's really good to see. And he's a uh, he's a guy who's infectious. Um, he's a leader of our defense, um, and not so much by what the, what he says, it's what he does. And uh, and I say I think you saw that reflective in, in his production. Coach, did you, were you satisfied with the level of intensity that the team showed overall throughout the game? Yeah, I, I'd be hard pressed to be disappointed in that. I mean, our guys right now, um, their playing is is is. Effort. I mean, the effort they've got right now, and then the commitment to each other, and the toughness they're playing with on that football field the other day, regardless of score, I don't, I don't question any of that. I don't question the way they come in here. We got back at nine o'clock at night. There was another hand, dozen guys back in this, back in the weight room already. Again, uh, they were here the next morning. Um, before, as the coaches got here, we get here five thirty-six in the morning, like day after the game, and 
There's another dozen guys back in here again. Um, their ability to want to be great, their ability to play well together, their ability to, to sustain and, and, and to strain um, regardless right now is, is infectious. You can see it. And I think they're rallying. You can see them communicate well. I mean, he, the things you hear on a sideline are important. It's hard from the outside, but things that you hear players say in game um, are also reflective of kind of the culture and their effort and their toughness and their mindset and the way they talk to each other when maybe it's not, not perfect. And right now there's a lot of really good dialogue going on on our sidelines when things are maybe a little adverse and a lot of people would pull the cord. Coach, it's one thing to have, you know, be in that environment and it's another one to know, have close situational football. For the young guys like Doug and everybody else, what do you sort of take away or how does that escalate their development when you get in an environment like that, let alone a close game? Yeah, I mean, you, that's a great question because that's, that's, uh, that's what Cam had last year, and now Doug's in this situation, you know, in those six games, and, and now Doug's healthy, so then Doug's in it. Um, and Doug learned a lot from last year watching the film, but being with your cleats in the ground in it is a different deal too. Um, you want those situations. You try to present them as much as you can in practice. Our, our practices are pretty intense. But, again, there's a handful of things in the game I can't put out there on a Tuesday through Friday. I just can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't dial up that intensity. I can't. And I know that because I've had a mouthpiece and I've been cleats on. I've been in that situation. I know it. There's some things your coaches can't give to you. And so you've really got to ramp up meetings and you've got to get to as close as you can as that threshold mentally as you can, emotionally as you can, physically and late in the game when you're tired as you can. And then hopefully they respond. And Doug's, Doug's going to get a lot of stuff out of that game right there. Um, that's a talented football team. That is a top half Pac-12 defense. That's a staff that's been together for six, seven years, a long time. Um, they, did, they do some nice stuff. They do some nice things and the things that, that we had to prepare for. But... Preparing for him and seeing him live in color uh, in a situation like that is just different, and he'll get a ton from that. Specifically with, with Doug, after looking at the film, what did you like about him, his you know, play, and what are just some things you're going to want to you know, kind of reinforce and, and practice this week? Well, I think someone asked the other day, you know, what do you want from Doug after that first game? I said consistency, do it again. I think that was the answer, actually, do it again. And I think the consistency that, that we've got, you've got to have the quarterback position in any offense, uh, specifically ours, is just something I think Doug wanted to have. You know, got to be able to play catch, uh, got to be able to manage protections. Uh, composure. I mean, that was a, the speed of the game was much different than week one. So, so that, that in itself uh, is one thing that he's going to he's gonna have to manage um, and I think he's going to learn from. Speed of the game, pocket presence, poise, play and catch, uh, under duress, tighter coverage. I mean, those are things that happen. Those are the, all things that come in part with playing really good competition. I think the quarterbacks uh, are going to get a chance to learn from and Doug specifically in that game. So there's a lot of things he's going to draw from that. We had a great quarterback, we had a long quarterback meeting. Um, after this game because there's so much in there that's really good. And I think that, uh, that everyone around him uh, is responsible. We watched, we watched most of the game, probably 45 to 50 of those clips as a whole unit just to make sure everybody's tied together because quarterback's one thing, but there's a protection involved, there's a route running involved, there's a coverage ID involved, there's a back protection involved, um, and making sure everyone's on the same accord because we're all collectively going to make it happen. Doug, don't throw him, play catch by himself. Um, and it goes, it's the other way too. Right. right. Coach, you mentioned the effort that they had in – on Brunkfield, you know, opportunity to go down there and win the game. He just had an amazing effort there escaping. Did you have a specific message for him coming off the sideline, knowing how hard he went to try to get you guys an opportunity to win? Is there anything specific that you told him after? No, I, I, there wasn't anything crazy that I told him in regards to his effort. I'm, I'm, well, if we're coaching effort at this piece, then we're, 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 we're a little bit behind. We're not now. We're, we're, we're the program right now, if you come our practice the way we go, the way guys work in the weight room, the way they come in, uh, we're not coaching anymore. We're coaching new stuff, which is good. Um, Doug's got that effort. Those guys understand the effort that's involved. There's standards set now that you don't have to talk about that stuff anymore. When he comes to the sidelines, mostly it's scheme. It's down to distance. It's situational football. It's what pressure, they have, what, what do they have of the day that we're dialing up? What do we got to do protection-wise to get it fixed? And then to make sure that, you know, for a guy who's, again, on what, fifth, sixth, seventh start or something, that he's still locked into that moment and not – either playing the last hand or too far out ahead or, or not dialed in. It's just being in that drive and, and, and working on some of the things we're doing. Sometimes when you're young and it, it's, it's early, you're still, it's, it's still pretty fast and trying to get through all that stuff. How, how did you feel? Were you, I mean, you talked about it before, being in close games with six games last year, being under eight points or less, and now this is your first opportunity with your new team to, to see exactly what they're like in that moment. How did, was there any, like, moment of frustration or was there, like, a – were you more excited? Okay, now we're in this moment. Now I see. Now that we're going to get after it, to see what they got. Yeah, I mean, and we're all we're all ultra competitive. I think uh, upstairs. I know that. Um, and so to be in those moments, I think the thing that that we met, we mentioned uh, 
a little bit to the team was was because we've learned so much from the last year. It's a new it's a new it's a new ball pro program, a new ball team because there's new guys. Uh, will all the new guys learn from that? They weren't there, but will the new will the older guys kind of infuse that to them? Hey, here's what happened last year. Here's kind of what we learned from. Hey, you know, do we infuse the young guys, uh, uh, the new guys? Um, and they've done that. And I think that now the next level is not just to be competitive in those games. Now you got to finish them. Now you need not just counter punches, not just rhythm. You need a knockout punch. Now you need to know how to knock guys out. And so that's what we're doing. That's what that's what we're learning. And that's a, that's a that's a progress. That, that's a there's a process and there's got to be progress to that because that's not something that you inherently go out and do when you're in the infant stages of trying to make something real. Coach, can you go over what you and your coaching staff learned about your team when they're put under pressure to prepare for the upcoming game? Um, well, I think we're, we're, we learned in just that game. I won't go back to last season just because this is the team, 2022 team. This, this team right here just displayed that they'll fight. They'll fight. They'll scrap. They'll be, they'll be positive. Uh, they'll be neutral. There, there's no, there was no negative talking. There wasn't a, there wasn't a pointing fingers. Um, and that happens early in a program. Um, we were part of that. Um, that's not there. These guys fight. They, they're together. They're committed. They, they like adjustments. They like the ball. They like the situation. They're saying the things that we say in, in, our, in our building. And it, it's coming out. I mean, that game's there for the grab. Got to go get it. North Texas is pretty heavy on play action when it comes to their offense. Mm -hmm. From a defensive standpoint, you know, what is, what is the mindset going into that? And also, from your standpoint as an offensive guy, is play action more effective when the running game is successful or is it just the action of play action? Well, that's a long conversation because that's yeah. a good one there analytically. I think that's a play action. I don't know if you were here last year. I, there's, a, there's a pretty good study going back that was part of an a, a analytics project. That's, that's what we call the gold standard and, and kind of the efficiency. There's a lot of play action teams that run play action. No one runs. Um, there's a lot of explosive plays that come off of it. The thing about play action is you just got to be disciplined. You can eye violate a lot of people. You can, you can, you can gap violate a lot of people. I mean, you can get them out of place. Um, you can put them in a position where you can um, manipulate the coverage based on the run fit of certain Ds. So play action is a big deal. We're, we're, our defense sees a lot from us. I know that because we do it a lot, as you guys have seen. Um, but there's a lot of things that, you know, there's, there's a – there's a lot of things of play action that we like, and I think there's a lot of things that you got to be disciplined with. Your defense got to be disciplined because there's a run fit to that play action, and then there's got there's a, there's an area of the field you got to be responsible for, let alone a man. And so, uh, I know I'm a big believer in play action. I've been for a long time. I think that's the that's the corner three in football for me. And if you look at some of the metrics, you guys have been pretty strong in the middle from a pass rush standpoint, but defensively. Uh, again, from your perspective, when you're looking at it, the balance or excuse me, the difference in terms of pressure up the middle as opposed to along the edges. How that kind of mucks up offense. Yeah, I think that I think that's uh, it's probably week to week, depending on who you're playing, because I think some of those some of those pressures are based on what the protection is, and you do it week to week in the game plan. I know we get schemed up in regards to you know um, how we protect guys, and, and on our defense is scheming up how they protect guys. Whether you can put pressure on a man to man, uh, if you can get a one on one situation, if you can get a back isolated, if you can get a center who's you know maybe, maybe got uh, a lot of pressure on him over the top, um, it really comes down to game to game to game. But I mean, up front. The violence these guys are playing with. I mean, you got I think eight or nine guys now with with, with a sack now. Three a bunch of different guys and leading the uh, what tied for third in the nation. Is that right? In, in sacks right now. Um, in, in sacks per game, um, it's pretty good. So I think they're doing an awesome job. And the other thing about that too is when you get started like that, now there's like a it's infectious because you got I mean you got right now I think we looked at it, it was like number one pass efficiency team in our conference right now is us, and then you got the top three team in sacks. I mean. What I told the O-line and D-line yesterday is those numbers don't mean anything besides the fact that on the field right now, you're O-line and D-line, you're going up against real guys. We're, throwing, we're protecting the ball really well, with obviously be good and pass, be pass efficient. So the line's doing a really nice job, but for the most part in the first two weeks of protecting the quarterback and throwing the ball, well, D-line, you're getting after their quarterback. You guys have practiced, better, that better show. It better be a tie three guys in the nation versus the number one team in the Mountain West Conference pass efficiency in one on It better look like that. And so that onus and that way to kind of coach it and kind of take ownership of it's a way I think that can help guys infuse practice and give you some goals in practice that aren't just, um, you know, towards a, an opponent or a logo. You know, gets, gets us working in practice, keeps our Tuesday and Wednesdays hot. Coach, how do you combat early on in the season the finger pointing, the blaming? Because like you touched on, that happens a lot of programs early on. Um, and I think a lot of the, the, you know, the players in your team, the defensive line, the offensive line, they killed it. Um, and it could have been easy for them to point out someone and say, look, we did our job. How come you didn't do yours? How do you combat that on a team like this? Well, we combat it already because they don't do that now. Um, I think in any, any program, I can only speak for, for us and the ones I've been a part of um, as an assistant coach as well. 
Um, that's what that's the culture thing that you have to kind of get through. Uh, we do it uh, in a lot of different ways. Number one, we watch a lot of stuff together. And so, and I do it with the whole team, and I do it with the whole group. I do it with the offense, I do it with the defense. That way, if there's any finger pointing going on, it points at me first. And then I make sure that they all see the big picture. Sometimes the corners aren't watching the front. Sometimes the front's not watching the corners. Sometimes the, the, the running back's not watching the center. And sometimes the Z's not watching the right guard, or vice versa. When you watch it together and you really get isolated and you get highlighted by somebody, you get highlighted as a coach, and you are, you're going to be told, hey, you think you want to point a finger? I'll find it. And so we did that. We cut the head off that thing, that snake, first thing we got here, because there was a lot of it. There was a lot of, a lot of I, um, a lot of not me, a lot of, a lot of that. And that happens a lot. We're, all, we're young, a lot of, they're young kids. That happens anywhere. I mean, young and old sometimes, if you let it. It permeates a culture. It kills a culture. So right off the bat, that was a big thing. In the locker room and in, in, in around the building, on scene and off season, there's none of that, man. There's accountability in this group right now that it's a we, not me deal. And if you think it's a me thing, I'll, I'll, find, I'll find some me for you, and I'll show the whole group. Because it's, it's all around. And, and all of us take the credit, all of us take the blame. So it's really good to see that right now because that doesn't exist. Coach, looking ahead to Saturday, uh, what are your first impressions of this North Texas team? Well, this is a, this is a well-coached team. I've known Seth for a long time. Um, Oklahoma guy, I've been around a bunch of guys I've coached with before and spent off season with them, you know, once a year. Um, good dude, card coach, uh, knows it well. Phil's coached a long time as well, defensive coordinator. Um, they've, they've won a lot of football games. He's been there a long time. I think he's going to the seventh year. Uh, the culture and the standards have been set there. Uh, good football in Texas. Obviously, got a lot of Texas football players. We know each other, know who they've got. Uh, it's a tough brand of football. They're going to run the football. They're going to be dynamic. They're going to they're they're gonna play, play action, run, run the ball with the, guys, with the backs they got. Uh, they'll be well coached, and they'll be physical. They'll be fast. They'll give us everything we want. With Naki being out um, last game, I mean, Darius and Tavis came in and stepped in, and Darius seemed to – Again, bring some juice to up front and, and make some plays. You talk about the impact he had, you know, early on and then later in the game as well. Yeah, he, he's done a nice job. But there's Tabs and those guys up front have really um, stepped up. I mean, it's the it's the who, who's up next type deal that we've tried. We try to coach and you try to get through to your team. Um, a lot of it has to do with holding guys accountable when they're going at the twos and not turning a turn a blind eye when the twos are in, saying, "Oh, it's just the next guys." Like everyone out there gets coached the same. Those guys get it. There is there is a coach hard as anybody else. Uh, and Darius knows that. Um, and so when he was able to get in there, it wasn't any different than probably getting in there and going to work besides with the game. Um, but he's done an awesome job. We recruited him to be to do some of the stuff he did. Um, and now getting Tavis to join the club and, and getting those guys dialed in uh, with Naki down, you just got to got to pick up the slack and got to go. Because at the end of the day, no one cares. You got to go. You got to go produce. Down the stretch, when you were on the eight with about three minutes left, what did you see on the? I guess it was the first down play with Brumfield and Robbins and Ricky White all on the same side. Yeah, that was a, uh, obviously a design play. You know, I thought we had a we had a good call. Liked the call, liked the call a lot. Caught him in a pressure. Um, caught the back out there in the flat. He just got to play catch. Uh, it, it's unfortunate we want that one back. That's an everyday drill. I think you're out there filming most of the time during that. Obviously, when I'm out there catching. Um, but we got to uh, we got to hit that flat. That's a, that's that's one of those throws. It's it's almost like we you know you're, you see him all the time. He's, He's so open, like, oh, okay, here we go, just headbutt it to him or whatever you got to do. Um, but that's, he's not the only one to have to have that happen, you know. Um, we got to complete that. That's a big ball. That's, that's a scoring play. Um, but then you got to get back in there and go again. And, and you can't lose sleep over. You got to get the next play. Um, it's unfortunate we were going to bang that in. We had a bunch of calls there. They had some things dialed up. Um, obviously, you can't, you can't go, the calls are one thing. You can't go against those. It is what it is. I can't, you can't come down to that and, and worry about the refs. But um, that, ball, that, play, that play was a, a big one. What did you see on the fourth down play? Was Kyle the intended receiver on that side when uh, he went down? Yep. <laughs> so with Just a, here so I don't get fined. With a, with a play like that, do you, do you send that to you know, the Pac-12 officiating office? Can you send that somewhere to say? Yeah, so we send, in, we send in, yeah, that, that's one of, one of many. I mean, we, we, every, every week if we get something we want either a consideration on or understanding of, we send them in. Oh, there's a few game, um, and so uh, I don't know how it'll turn out, but it, it won't change anything. Obviously, um, it is what it is. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't have to come down to those things, you know. But uh, here we go, North Texas. Yeah. Yeah. One more. Uh, so it looked like Mendiola Jensen got the start at the one corner. Yeah. And then eventually Oliver came in, and then Oliver piled up a bunch of tackles. So what do you think of both of those guys, and then how 
it developed along the way through the game? Yeah, I think I think nine got thrown in there to see. We want to see had a good week of practice. Uh, we mix it up in the back end there uh, with some of the, some of the rotations we've got and some of the some of the scheme things we've got. Uh, different plan for kind of different guys. Um, and I thought no, I got got thrown in the water. He got thrown in the deep end, and we got to see where he can go. He's like, that's a that's a tough matchup he's in. Um, we knew that. He knew that. Um, he'll get better for that. And then Cam came in, and I thought responded well. Responded well, especially coming off a game where maybe he you know wasn't most excited about his production. Um, they made a couple scheme adjustments, and I thought they rallied well. Um, no one had to held their head down or anything like that. It was, I'll go in and I got to make some plays. And I thought he did a great job. And uh, I'm excited for those guys to move forward here and, and continue to grow together. Coach, what did your secondary do specifically in the second half? Because the first they gave up over 200 yards passing. So. Uh, without giving up the, the entire change, they just made some adjustments in, in regards to how we'd manipulate maybe a half a field or or certain uh, splits and coverages and um, just some different calls and things like that. I think there was a, a more disciplined understanding of what was going to get done, how they were attacking them. Um, I think that's part of it, you know. Thank you, man. Good. Nice, guys. Have a good day. Awesome. When you go against a guy like Jay Knott and what he did early on, getting them his real routes, how difficult is it for you guys to, like, scheme up for, or even make that adjustment early on? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a good athlete, like you mentioned. And we kind of knew going in that he was going to be their guy that they wanted to get out in space and create explosives with. We saw that uh, the week before when they were playing Davis. So we kind of had an idea what he brought to the table. And, and it was our job to kind of neutralize him and, and uh, make him not be much of a, as a factor as he was. For both of you guys, you had close losses last year. Was the reaction to this close loss different than last year? What was the mood like after the game? It was different, yeah. I mean, any game that you lose, uh, it sucks because we go into every game prepared to win and, and expecting to win just based on the work that we put in throughout the week. But uh, losing those tough ones, uh, it kind of, in my eyes, it builds resilience and, and it can either make a team closer or, or divide. So, uh, you know, we never let it divide us. We just we move forward from it and learn from the film and then, and then re-attack. I just feel that... It just goes to show how much this team is that much more closer, you know, especially with all the mistakes that we made in the game, both on all three sides of the ball. I feel like we can improve that much more this week, especially going into North Texas and stuff like that. So. Question for both of you guys right here. What are your first impressions of North Texas? Um, you know, just based on, just going off uh, days of film so far, you know, we know they're an ex experienced team, experienced offense. Um, they're going to run the ball downhill. It's kind of their identity. Uh, I know they got an experienced quarterback, and they got some, uh, some good couple running backs and a good old line. So, you know, it's going to be another test for us and uh, just making sure that we stop the run. That's where it always, always starts for us as a defense is making sure that, uh, you know, we call it the trenches is taken care of first, and then um, that kind of goes into the back end as well and tackling. So. You know, we, we kind of know that what they're going to bring, and it's it's really just about us. I think for an offensive standpoint, they load the box a lot. They like to have seven in the box. So really, they're just trying to stop our run. I think um, against Cal, we did a really good job in the second half and running the ball. Um, I think their front seven is pretty good. I think their D-line is pretty solid. Um, it's going to be a big test for the offensive line again in terms of uh, getting on the same level. and. Um, they also bring a lot of different types of blitz, different patterns that we see. So I think a lot of that has to do with fundamentals and all that stuff. And I think one thing that the offense needs to do in order to win is just execution. I think a lot of last week what we did was not who we, who we are, who we want to be. So I think execution is a big piece of this week. From an execution standpoint, obviously you get a, a tough environment like that one. When you're going up against competition like that, when you have situational football and all the things that coach is preaching is before you, you guys have success in certain parts. Is there good that you take away given the competition that you're going up against situationally? I would say um, everybody's good. You know, everybody has their own type of players that uh, they have. But I think in terms of execution, it really just falls onto the players and in our preparation and how we prepare for the week. So I think uh, we just got to rely on each other on execution. Bit more about just stopping the run and just being more physical in the red zone this 
Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we uh, pride ourselves on as a defense is it's, it's one of the keys of victory every week is to be able to stop the run because uh, our philosophy, we believe that it, it starts up front. And, uh, you know, the secondary takes care of the, the front and vice versa. It's all connected. So we're able to stop the run and get, get teams doing stuff that they're not as uh, comfortable doing is, is a goal for us. And, you know, we, uh, we did pretty well against Cal with that. Uh, and, and then there's obviously always stuff to, to clean up, but, you know, just being able to, to be tough and when it's the run game, it's, it's man to man and, uh, you know, it's made the best man win type of mindset. So we go into that and trying to be as physical as possible. How are you seeing Cam and Noel kind of step up and make that jump uh, this season? Yeah, I mean, so far these two game two games, they both made big jumps and uh, it comes down to experience. Um, last year they were both pretty young, and Noel played a little bit more than Cam uh, the COVID year. But uh, now that they have that experience, that that breeds confidence, so they're able to go out and play that the game that that they know they can. So, you know, just seeing them play and and not just them too, like Jono and the entire secondary is pretty young, but they're all uh, fully capable, and, and it's exciting to watch them play. AJ, coach was referencing the uh, the sack numbers and just the fact that it's not one given guy. What is that attestment to when it comes to this group? Uh, the depth, the depth that we have up front. Um, you know, we looked at the sack numbers for the past two games, and and we're we're pretty happy with that. But it, like you said, and like Coach told us yesterday, it's not just one guy with with the, with a bunch of sacks. It's multiple people on the D line and and the outside linebackers as well. So it just shows that that everybody's fully capable and. Um, you know the scheme that we're running is is working, is, and uh, we always talk about to confuse and pressure the quarterback. It's one of our big goals on defense. So just being able to do that with a multiple amount of people is, is fun. Believe uh, numbers for Doug for the first two games against the Blitz were really different. You know, he was nine, I think it was nine to ten against Idaho State against the Blitz, five to twelve against Cal. Are they doing like more exotic stuff for you guys, and how do you guys think you were picking that up? Um, I think the offensive line, I think we picked it up pretty well. I think they brought um, a little bit more than we could protect. Sometimes they brought six when we were blocking five. So I think sometimes, like, uh, we did our job offensive line-wise, I think. It's just we got to beat the ball or beat the the free hitter with the ball sometimes. But I think Doug is doing a really good job back there, you know, flipping us sometimes. But uh, I think it all starts with our fundamentals, with our protection of offensive line-wise. The game, the offensive line, your offensive line dominated um, Cal. Um, other than the last, the final two possessions of the game, what happened there with, you know, Doug was sacked twice in the final possession and then the one before the fourth and eight, you know, a lot of pressure was put on Doug also. So what happened in those final two possessions after, you know, 40, what was it, you know, 55 minutes of dominant football? I think it was just a lot of miscommunication sometimes. I think one of the factors that really um, our downfall was the noise crowd noise, something that we weren't really prepared for yet. But I think that's one of the learning lessons that we can take into the coming weeks where it's going to get loud. Sometimes we can't hear Doug. Sometimes um, we can't hear some of the protection calls. So I feel like having that in the next coming weeks would have really helped us in the next game to come. So. And then AJ, um, we asked Coach this, but you know, placing blame is easy on programs early on in the season. How, how do you guys not do that? He says you guys don't do that. Um, but you know, you guys were dominant. The front seven was great um, against Cal, but uh, the secondary was a little shaky in the first half. Um, so, what do you do to, to kind of uplift those guys and tell them, you know, we're all right, you know, everything will be fine? Yeah, I mean, you can never place blame. There's 11 of us on the field at a time, and and each one of us has a job to do. And and sometimes, if if someone doesn't do their job, it makes another person look like they didn't do their job. So, that's what I mean when I say it's all really connected. But um, you know, like I said earlier, the, the secondary, they're young. They're young guys. Um, Dre does a good job of leading them. But the mindset that we have as a defense and the mindset that they take on as well is, is like, is what's going to carry us for the rest of the season. Like, we, when we take the field, we really feel like there's no one that, could, that can stop us and that there's no one that can take the field with us. So, you know, just, just applying that, that dominant mindset is something that um, – you know, Coach Hayward installed in us since he's been here and something that we kind of allows us to play with a chip on our shoulder. Awesome.
when you guys you talk about defending the run against North Texas, they're also a heavy play action team. So, like, for you, what's that balance in terms of getting aggressive against the run, but also not trying to get caught out of position? Yeah, um, that's a good question. You know, the, a lot of times play action is, is used to freeze up the linebackers and kind of get us caught playing the run and then throw the ball over our heads. So um, it just comes down to playing discipline with our eyes and making sure that, um, you know, you could tell the play action versus a run sometimes, well, most of the time if you're playing with good eyes, just based on the O-line and, and their pad level. You know, we call it high hats. So um, if we get a high hat read but they're doing play action, we know it's passed because the O-line isn't protecting like a run. So just picking up on stuff like that and being disciplined with our keys. Um, a question for both of you. How do you feel playing at home gives you any advantages to keep the competitive momentum going? I think playing at home, you know, everybody's, we have a lot of the energy, like the crowd, like how Cal had against us. They had that energy where the defense kind of, uh, you know, is in the moment, you know what I mean? So I would say that having that crowd is like their 12th man, like a lot of people say. So having them in, in our in that atmosphere really helps us, especially especially when the momentum starts going. You can start feeling it with the team. So, Yeah, uh, to expand on that, another part, I mean, obviously we love playing in front of our fans too, but another part of it is just getting in that, that game day routine. You know, when you play at home, it's, it's pretty much the same. The time might change, but... Um, the, the meetings in the hotel, and we're in our building game day, so you kind of get um, comfortable with that. But uh, another thing with this with this group is like we we're okay with being on the road and and this us versus them type of mindset. Of Seventy of us and however many of them, including their fans. So you know they both bring on their their uh, pros and cons uh, home in a way, but. Being at home is, is definitely, uh, you know, in front of our fans and stuff is, is where we like to play, too. What's the energy like in the locker room right now after a tough loss like that? But knowing, is there anything being said to, to make sure that the season stays on the rails and you guys are still positive and, and you know, are able to reach your goals going forward? Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to, re, uh, to overreact right now. It's only, it's only week two, and um, the thing is we kind of beat ourselves on Saturday. We... We watched the film and we made the corrections and and going forward we understand what uh, what plays we left on the field and what we could have done differently. So, you know, there's no juice that's been lost in the locker room. We had we went in yesterday and we had a lift and you know guys are just happy to be back and and excited. So, you know, just just uh, finding ways to get that loss behind us and making a, a an even bigger chip on our shoulder. Yeah, I think that to expand on that, I think that. It just goes to show how much more room we have more uh, to improve. You know, there's uh, we did beat ourselves on Saturday, but I think um, it just shows that our best football is still ahead of us. So I think that, uh, again, execution is one of the biggest things that we need to do um, in terms of on all phases of the ball. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you.